Skål! Cheers, Kevin! Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Well, guess what? We're back from Amera Vespa 2022 and we survived. Oh, Especially yeah! Kevin survived. Mm -hmm. Well, you're wondering what these mugs are all about. So, Kevin got the furthest ridden and our shop, Vespa Motorsport, got the Best Dealer Award. Very cool mugs. Got like a uh, supplemented uh, Amer Vespa right in the bottom. Pretty impressive. Yeah. But is what I want to do is have Kevin share his stories about his travels. He did, I don't know, was it two and a half, three weeks? Was on the road. It was three, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. On the road with the Vespa GTS. And I thought it'd be pretty cool to hear some of his stories because I bet a lot of people that were pretty interested that he rode this far. Of course, he got some extreme events like Cannonball coming up in 2023, which is pretty exciting. It's going to start in San Clemente, which is um, just, I don't know, about 40 miles north of San Diego. And hopefully I attend. I'm not going to ride. I'm sorry, I'm not into that. I walk across <laughs> America is more my style. <laughs> All right, so let me hand it over to Kevin. He's got lots of details about his ride. All right, so first off, let me just thank everybody for their support and just the, the, the welcoming I got in, <laughs> the welcoming I got when I arrived in, in Minneapolis at, in St. Paul. It was really, really great. Uh, so some of the details, uh, I started off at 4.30 uh, on morning of the 17th with my feet in the sand uh, shortly away, uh, just a short distance from here. And I finished my ride with my feet in the sand uh, just a couple days ago. Uh, at which point, uh, let me give you some details. First things first, it was 5,700 miles. Um, my trip to Amer Vespa was 2804, earning me the furthest ridden on a modern scooter. I'm very honored to receive this, as I had also received the furthest ridden on a, on a vintage scooter in 2019. Um, that being said, uh, I burned 80 gallons worth of fuel. And in that, it looks like my overall average was 71.61 miles per gallon. So that's pretty impressive in regards to a modern scooter. 300 cc's, all the creature comforts as, that you have here in front of you. What I did do is I did maintain a lower, to, uh, lower cruising speed, somewhere between 65, and I never really, really tried to exceed 70 miles an hour unless I had to. There were some instances on downhills and stuff like that where I was like, I just wanted to get where I was going and, and, and did that. One of the great experiences I had was leaving Minneapolis. Um, it was a little bit windy, uh, but as soon as I got into the trees, I took the, the back roads all the way down, and as soon as I got into the trees, gosh, it, was, it ended up being a tailwind. And um, with that, riding at slower speeds, when I finally pulled over for a, uh, for a gas stop, I was really, really worried. I knew I was really low. It turns out I ended up getting 75 miles per gallon on that tank full. And that was, that was really impressive based on you know, uh, what you normally get around town. So if you're really interested in saving on gas, full throttle isn't necessarily the way to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I can tell you that from technical experience. When you ride these scooters at that last 25% of what they got, the fuel consumption goes through the pits because yeah. the motor starts running richer to keep it cooler. You're stressing the motor a lot. And it's just like a car. I always tell people, do you drive your car full throttle all the time? No. Guess what? The mileage really suffers in a car if you start to really book it. Yeah. But the cool thing is, I don't know, if you're looking to penny pinch, especially in the world of $5 a gallon gas, um, it's a little bit more fun and better miles per gallon, or as you could say, smiles per gallon than just driving, I don't know, a fuel efficient little compact car or a Prius. I mean, those things do shine, the hybrids do shine in the city, but when you're cruising on the highway, um, I don't know, you're getting 50 miles a gallon. Don't get me wrong, that's pretty, 
impressive feat for a 2,500 pound car to get, but. I was just really impressed. I had no idea what kind of gas mileage I'd be getting. And so in doing my calculations, I was very, very careful to calculate every uh, fuel fill, uh, fuel stop, and make sure that I had receipts or, or photographs of the, of the pump. He's trying to learn from the pilots because you've got to keep a re real detailed logbook when you fly an airplane. Yeah. And Kevin thought he was flying an airplane when he was riding this GT. Oh yes, exactly, exactly. A couple other things that I would strongly suggest is make an investment in quality tires. I can tell you right now, based on my experience, the Michelin City Grip is the way to go. This is the Michelin City Grip 2. This has got uh, 5,700 miles on it. And you can see that I still have I can tons. Still, the, the penny, uh, the head on Lincoln is completely submerged in the tire tread still. That's pretty impressive, so I, would, I would say it still has, I don't know, about a third of its life still left on it. That's pretty exciting. Impressive. That's the Michelin City Grip 2, uh, inflated to the correct pressure and not riding it really hard. I mean, obviously, if you're doing stop and go real hard riding or you're doing 75 mile an hour riding all the time, you're going to eat up that tire a little quicker. But. Yeah, absolutely. I was just really stoked on, on, on this. So. Another thing is I had a full bucket of spares ready to go. I didn't have to use any of them. So I'm really, really thankful to the overall quality and reliability of this scooter when it's ridden the way it's meant to be ridden. So if anybody would like to know a little bit more about how I organized my trip, you can always reach, me, reach out to me via a direct message through Instagram or through my email here at the shop. If you know me on Instagram, it's gonna be uh, Instastram, uh, or you can just reach me at Kevin uh, at scooterwest.com because uh, I have some details that I'm not really going to be able to get into here but I would love to share what I know and hopefully inspire you to do a solo trip. Solo trips on yourself, with yourself, in your helmet is to me is the best way to figure, <laughs> figure yourself out. It's very therapeutic in those regards and I highly recommend helmet therapy for those of you who have not had the opportunity plan yourself a nice little 100 mile trip out to the country and back or maybe a quick little overnight 250 miles in one direction get a hotel wake up early in the morning and come home it's a great way to kind of just air yourself out and get ready and recharge believe it or not so you have any questions for me um, so no pun intended I know you had a lot of therapy up high, but how was your butt therapy? Oh my gosh. Yeah, but, so you know. a couple things I have to say is that this bike normally st uh, stock uh, starts life with the with a black black seat with white piping on it. I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but what I as soon as I got to uh, Minnesota, I started looking around for a replacement seat. Um, so I traded it with a really, really great guy out of Houston. He was super cool and super helpful in regards to getting us, um, getting me uh, a seat off of his bike and trading it out. Thank you, Grayson. The seat's coming back to you uh, post haste. Another thing that I did. So the problem with the piping is it like cuts into your thighs. And yes. And just like. It chafes, homie. It chafes. <laughs> okay, getting to the point. Once it again. chafes. So. Um, so that, so I can, I strongly recommend um, seamless undergarments uh, uh, and something without a piping on it that's not going to cut into your, cut, cut into your under, underside. And then also something that's going to allow for a little extra padding or a little, little extra ventilation. There's two different products that are on the, on the market. The Airhawk, which has been very, very popular, you can inflate this and deflate this to kind of suit your weight and overall uh, style. Um, I learned that in my longer days, if I overinflated this just a little bit, it took a minute to get used to, but at the end of the day, I was a lot more comfortable. I didn't learn that until my way, uh, probably about my third day on the way home. Um, and there's a, there's a small little pad inside here that inflates and, and deflates. You can see that here and you just do that by mouth. So it's not, it's not like a crazy thing. You can 
blow it up like a balloon, sit on it and go, okay, that works, a little bit more, a little bit less, and you can make the adjustments to fit you, which is really cool. And they come in three different sizes. Unfortunately, this is not a product that we offer, but it is readily available uh, across the whole uh, world of power sports, so on and so forth. Uh, there's also another mesh cover that's available, and that just kind of goes over and that provides a lot of air uh, flow underneath in, in your undercarriage and for the hot days because I was experiencing uh, weather from in one day I went from uh, 63 degrees in the morning to 109 degrees in the afternoon and then back down to 72 degrees when I was coming down the hills uh, coming back into San Diego County on my last day so uh, it was it was pretty gnarly. How about hydration on those longer trips? I have to tell you thank you so much for mentioning that we talk about long trips. You need, you have to have that, the, the, the backpack, you have to have the hydration system. You have to have like the camelback. Yeah, or camelback yeah. or any of the others that are out there. Camelback's kind of like the premium product, uh, but there's some others out there and trial and error is, is ultimately what you're gonna, what you're gonna go after. Um, I would start my days off with three liters, which would be a full bag. And I'd be down to about a half a liter by the end of the day. And you need to be able to be able to learn how to sip and ride, sip and ride, sip and ride while you're going. Um, I don't suggest like putting any sort of um, supplements or anything like that in that camel bag because it's going to get really like over days. Uh, it'll get how you say, it'll get a little, a little grungy, it'll get a little smelly, it won't taste right. So let's just keep it with the uh, just distilled water, uh, bottled water, something like that in there. Um, and then also you want to have uh, some snacks and stuff like that on tap ready to go. And then if any of you are familiar with hiking, you have your, um, the, the 10 elements, the 10 things that you take with you hiking everywhere you go. It's a great idea to have that on your, on your backpack if it's not too heavy. That's going to include, uh, well, you can just email me, Kevin at scooterwest.com, and I'd be happy to share all those details with you because I can get way into the weeds. Here's some highlights, though, let me tell you. Okay, uh, I crossed, I basically rode from this coast to the north coast, which would be Lake Michigan and back. During that time, I crossed five major rivers. That includes the Rio Grande, the Pecos, the Colorado, the, uh, the Missouri River, and the Mississippi River. So I crossed all those going up and coming back. So I was really, really fortunate. I stopped at every river and I wet my foot a little bit just to, to, to claim my stake and just say, I did this. Crossing the Mississippi was elation. How about, uh, what was your longest day and what's the highest elevation you think you hit? Ooh, those are really good questions. I know you didn't go through the Eisenhower Pass. I know that's 11,000 feet. No, I didn't. I, I, I crossed the, I did the Great Divide uh, down low, and I think I was a little over 6,000 feet, and that was going to be in New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, it's totally beautiful across there, and it's really, really mellow. Um, and that, that part of the country is beautiful. Um, and then my longest day was 618 miles. And that oh, was come on, you could have did eight or nine hundred. No, 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 no. Six hundred eighteen miles on a motorcycle. Oh my God! I cheated. Yeah, six <laughs> six hundred eighteen miles. That took me between uh, Hallbrook, Arizona, and up through Albuquerque, and then up around uh, Jemez Road or that Jemez Valley area into Los Alamos, then on to Dollart, Texas. So, if anybody's familiar with those areas in New Mexico above uh, Albuquerque and out in the woods, there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's our secret though, okay? <laughs> no, but it's, it's really pretty out there. And if you, have a, if you ever want to know how beautiful America is, you just get, get on a scooter and go for a ride, man. That's, that's how you're going to learn. So anyways. And you can do it on any scooter. I mean, Dude, um, I did it on a 2005 PX, man. I did the same route. Yeah, you know? I, I did a 250 mile day on a 50, but two years ago, right at the start of the pandemic. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it so it's, it's, you can do it. And I've, I've always been under the motivation. You know what? I remember somebody talking to me when I did a touring trip up to San Francisco. They're like, you are so crazy. I can't believe you're doing it on a scooter. Guess what? They were on a bicycle and they, they were doing it on a bicycle and they thought that was just a very normal. And then I realized throughout the whole entire world, whole entire continents, people ride bicycles or they walk. They walk across whole entire continents. They still do that today. They ride bicycles across the United States. So if it's got a motor, even a 50cc motor, it has to be easier. 
<laughs> it's, it, it's pretty, it, it's, once you wrap your head around it and you get some training in, and meaning that you get out there, understand what 50 miles feels like, understand what 100 miles feels like, then you can, you can go 500 miles. If, you, if you're cool with 250 miles, then you'll be cool with 500 miles. It's just a lot longer day. That's it. And so, yeah. So we got a ton more to talk about, but I don't know if we want to really get into it here. But once again, you can always reach out to me and uh, check out my feed on Instagram and, and reach out to me here at the shop. I'm happy to share all of my experiences. And this guy's going to do it again. I oh, probably yeah. will. Uh -huh. We'll see you, Flagstaff. All right. <laughs> see you on the next one. High five. Yeah. All right, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, Scooter West, thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Maybe it motivates you to want to go on a longer ride with your scooter. Because, you know, by definition, a scooter is kind of like an urban mobility kind of vehicle, is what, you know, I think is how they're usually engineered. But, I don't know, you can always stretch your boundaries. Just like you can do with any type of vehicle or even your own legs if you're walking. Until next time, Robot here.